The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. Today on CityCast Philly, it's the Friday News Roundup. We're talking about how Temple's acting president, Joanne Epps, collapsed at a university event, then later died. More on her legacy and reactions from the university. Also, what to expect in an upcoming mayoral debate and why a South Philly bagel poet decided to close his shop. It's Friday, September 22nd. I'm Trini Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Joining me this week is Oliver Sabo, reporter for Temple News. Hey, Oliver. Hey, thanks for having me. Sure. Chris Brennan, political reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Chris. Very happy to be here. Great to have you. And CityCast Philly lead producer, Laura Benchoff. Hey, Laura. Hey, Trinae. Let's get right into the news. Before we do that, I have to say full disclosure. I'm a graduate of Temple University, proud graduate. Oliver, you're a student at Temple. You've been covering this story all week. Acting Temple President Joanne Epps died after collapsing at a university event. Oliver, can you just take us back? How did this all happen? Yeah, I think um, it was... You know, as everybody's been saying, it was just completely out of the blue. Random. We got that initial yeah. report from Temple that she had collapsed on um, Tuesday afternoon. And then, you know, not even an hour later, she had she had been pronounced dead at the hospital. So just just a shock for everybody. And, you know, being in the city, you know how beloved she was to Temple, but also to the Philadelphia community. So it's definitely a shock. Can you tell us who she was? Before she even stepped into the role of acting president, she had been with the university for years before, right? Yeah, she had been at Temple officially for 38 years. But even before that, she had she had started with a job and the students in her bookstore. But yeah, her time at Temple, she served as uh, provost, as dean of the law school. Um, she even served on former President Jason Wingard's senior leadership until he shaked things up. Yeah, it's uh, she's she's a huge part of the community. Provost Mandel said to know Joanne was to be your friend. Um, so she was she definitely had that personality. And I met her once and she immediately, you know, she she was so interested in in you, yeah. even though even if you were reporting on a story. So she she was great. I've met her and I spoke with her during the pandemic. So it was virtual. So this week the university held a vigil for her at the Bell Tower. What's been the reaction on campus? I think a lot of shock. Um, I, met, I was actually working on a story and turned it in right before uh, on Monday night about, you know, morale at the university mm. and how students are feeling after what was a tough semester with a strike, with a uh, president resigning, with some, you know, continued safety issues. And most everybody looked to Joanne Epps for the reason why things were improving. So it, it was definitely a hit. Her, her communication with teachers, with faculty, and even with students was just, you know, a hundred per a hundred times better than what uh, former President Jason Wingard was. So it's, uh, you know, it comes as a shock, definitely. For sure. Oliver, the university is also, you know, like you said, going through this process of searching for a new president prior to her death. So who is going to serve in her role now? I've heard a, a few names. Um, you know, I think most people would look to Kaiser, the uh, chief operating officer and senior vice president, or uh, Provost Gregory Mandel. You know, there, there's been no word on that. I did speak to Board of Trustees Chairman Mitch Morgan for a couple minutes yesterday, and he said that there would be a interim in the next two to three days. And then obviously they've already got the search going for the next president, which he hopes to be done in nine months to a year. Mm -hmm. You know, I think their priority right now is obviously finding that interim. Thanks for that. And my um, condolences to Epps' family and the Temple community. Mm -hmm. 
the Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. This episode is brought to you by Certified Piedmontese Beef. Listen up, foodies. Make your next meal even better with real Nebraska beef. They have healthy, tender, delicious Italian heritage beef, grass-fed and sustainably raised on lush pastures in the Midwest. You can even create your own personally curated meat box that's shipped right to your door. To get two free steaks with any purchase over $50, use the code FREEBEEF at checkout. Learn more and shop exclusively at cpbeef.com. Shifting gears a bit, Chris, we're about six weeks away from the general election. This is a big election year in the city. We're going to be voting for our 100th mayor and a bunch of other seats as well. Big news this week, mayoral candidates Sherelle Parker, a Democrat, and David O, a Republican, are going to have a debate on October 26th. That's about a month away. Chris, what are the details behind this? So they'll be debating on KYW News Radio at 8 a.m., which is one of the busiest. Right and t- early. <laughs> one of the busiest times for KYW. It's when people tune in mostly to find out what the traffic is like uh, and maybe the weather as well. And so that'll be a radio debate. We do think that there will be at least one television debate as well. It's not everything David O wanted, but it's better than nothing, which for a while it looked like he might get. Yeah. I know we talked about this over the summer that he wanted to debate so much. We didn't hear much from Parker at the time, but now it's happening. Okay, so, Chris, let's pull this back a little bit. Do debates actually matter? You know, you said this is a radio debate. You wrote an article about how there is often a debate about debates in Philly. So does this matter? So it probably does not move the meter much for either candidate. As I reported on the debate about debates, this is all risk for Sherelle Parker and all reward for David O. Ooh, why is that? Well, the city has a seven to one Democrat to Republican voter registration advantage. And so that allows Democratic candidate for mayor to essentially ignore a Republican candidate and still win, which is what Jim Kenney did with uh, the Republican uh, nominee, Billy Changalini, back in 2019. He just, Jim Kenney refused to acknowledge that Changalini was alive and barely campaigned (laughs) and won four out of five votes in the general election in 2019. So he paid no political price for ignoring his opponent. Now, Billy Changalini was a different candidate than David O. David O has a career record as a councilman at large and much stronger name that recognition. And so I think Sherelle Parker really had to give him something. Okay. You also reported on a kind of strange candidate forum earlier this month where he only he spoke. What happened there? So this has a taint of shenanigans to it. This was uh, organized by a Republican ward leader who claimed that Sherelle Parker had been invited and did not respond. Sherelle Parker's camp responded that the first they heard about this event was a couple days before it, when the Republican ward leader emailed them and said, why have you not responded to our invitation? And it felt, had a feeling like a setup. Mm-hmm. They were they were sort of taunting her into showing up at a forum by claiming that she was not responding to them. Um you know, the Republicans, David O and this Republican war looter, Phil Fisher, who who put it together, they, they never really had any proof of an invitation to Parker. And when it all came to pass, it was being held in uh, essentially a podcast studio up on uh, North Philadelphia on North American Street. And uh, the owner of the building decided that he wanted no part to play in any of that. And so he locked the doors and David O wound up holding his candidate forum on the sidewalk. I see the picture um, in your article. Yeah, it's a bunch of folding chairs. About 30 people showed up. Uh, the uh, The Republican ward leader ran the soundboard for the whole thing. It was, it was uh, I mean, it's campaigning in Philadelphia. You make do with what you have. Interesting. 
Chris, tell me, what will you be listening for in the KYW debate? So I think probably one of the most interesting things they'll talk about is the appointment of the next Philadelphia police commissioner, because obviously that's going to be a big early duty for the next mayor. And Commissioner Outlaw sort of cleared the field by announcing her departure before anybody could announce her departure for her. I mean, she might have stayed on, but she might also have been shown the door. And so I think the appointment of the next police commissioner will be a key component of a discussion about public safety in Philadelphia. All right. Well, we'll keep our eyes out for more details on that story. Shifting gears, Laura, you've been following news happening at this beloved South Philly bagel shop. The owner has decided to close their doors. Now, businesses open, they close all the time, right, in the city. So why does this place stand out for you? Okay, that's a good question. And I think to answer that, I need to give uh, some backstory. So the business that's closing is called Korshak's Bagels. It's at 10th and Morris in South Philly. And it was started by a guy named Phil Korshak, who, according to the company's website, began making bagels all the way back in 2003. And here's a line from the shop's website. It began as an effort to manifest joy and quite rightly proceeds in the same direction today. So that kind of gives you a sense of his vibe. Like Korshak is also a poet and he created all this hype for his business before it opened in 2021 by posting these beautiful bagels on Instagram with his poetry alongside them. What types of bagels is this place known for? Oh, they had all kinds. It was pretty creative. I mean, they have like a long, hot and cheddar. They had the classic ones. One of the quirks of this shop is that they didn't always do a great job of posting their menu options online. So it was a little bit of a surprise. Okay, right. You got to kind of guess when you get there. You kind of got to just go through this experience. And it, it was an experience. So it opened in May 2021, immediately took off. It got on a best of list from the New York Times. Bon Appetit also wrote it up. There was always a line down the block. And Korshak kept doing his thing, kept doing his poetry thing. He'd paste poems in the window. It had all the signs of a very successful business between the accolades mm -hmm. and the obvious sort of like popularity of the business. But this week, he puts up another video on Instagram saying he's shutting the whole thing down. He holds the camera over this letter that he's written with some sad music behind it and says, you know, the shop can't function economically and provide a living wage. Mm. He says he's barely been able to take any time off. And he also says some things that kind of hint maybe at tension. You know, he says his staff would prefer to continue the business. Um, but he says, quote, changes in the process in exchange for efficiency are not changes I think are going to be successful or on brand for Korshak. You know, he says he doesn't want to automate making the dough or, or add a new computer kiosk. And he says, quote, my vision has failed. He also says every bagel is a love letter. And that's sort of his whole approach is it's more than bagels. Oh, that's sweet. But, you know, this kicked off a lot of discussion. You know, it was A, very beloved, B, very, you know, popular, very written up. You know, some of the local news outlets interviewed the staff who were like, yeah, we don't want to close. We think this is really disappointing. You know, we respect his decision to step away, but we believe there are there is a way to make this a profitable business. So people are going wild online. There's all kinds of theories. What went wrong? Was it an internal conflict? Is it too hard to run this business? But, you know. According to his announcement, they're closing September 24th. So a lot of people are just jamming, trying to get their last Korshak's bagel before they potentially go away forever. All right. Well, Laura, how do you feel about the bagels? They were good. You know, I went a couple times. I really like their cream cheese. Their cream cheese, they put goat cheese in it, which was delicious. It was like a little okay. tangy. <laughs> tangy. Were they the best bagels in the city? I don't feel like I'm the authority on that, you know? I was going to say, well, have you found a new bagel shop? I really like Vanilla, which is on Pashunk Ave, because A, they don't sell out. So you, Well, they do sometimes, but you're more likely to be able to get <laughs> actually get your bagel. Like That was one of the things on Reddit. I was reading how people were reacting to Korshak, and they were like, I can never even get a bagel. This man's always sold out. The line is an hour. Uh, you know, So there may be a, something to that lack of efficiency critique. You know, If you want to sell bagels, you got to be good at selling bagels. But that wasn't his vision, and he's pulling the plug. All right. That was Laura Benchoff, lead producer at CityCast Philly, Chris Brennan at the Philadelphia Inquirer, and Oliver Sabo at Temple News. Thank you all so much for joining me this week on CityCast Philly. Glad to do it. Thank you. Thanks. It was a good time. Since we recorded this part of the Friday News Roundup, 
Mitchell L. Morgan, chair of the Board of Trustees at Temple, came out with a statement on Thursday saying, to the Temple community, we all continue to mourn the loss of Joanne Epps, our president, provost, dean, faculty member, friend, and mentor. At the Board of Trustees meeting on October 10th, the, quote, acting notation will be formally removed from Joanne Epps' most recent title and recognize her brief but impactful term as the 13th president of Temple University. You can see the complete statement in our show notes. It's time for the tip of the week, where we share a life hack for living in Philly. Fall is just around the corner, and now is the perfect time to make any fixes to your home before winter rolls in. The Philadelphia Water Department suggests cleaning leaves out of gutters and make sure to never rake leaves into drains because that could cause flooding. You can request a cleaning for a storm drain by calling 311 or go to philagovernor 311. If you have a tip of the week, we'd love to hear from you too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Our lead producer is Laura Benchoff. Our producer is Abby Fritz. Our Hey Philly newsletter editor is Brittany Valentine. And our host is me, Trina Nuri. Music is by Philly's own Interminable, with additional music from All the Kimonos and James Weldon. If you enjoyed this week of episodes, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Philly. We'll be back Monday morning with more news from around the city. Have a great weekend and be safe, y'all. Bye. Bye.